part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Hawkeye Nation, to another episode of the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast, your daily podcast covering your Iowa Hawkeyes on the Locked On Podcast Network. As always, I am your host, Wright Hillpiper, and I want to thank you all for making the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast your very first listen every single day. You can find the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast for free wherever you get your podcasts at, and also on YouTube by searching Locked On Hawkeyes. Now, before we get into things today, I want to apologize to you all for my brief two-day hiatus. Uh, if you don't follow the Locked On Hawkeyes page on Twitter, um, I put out a tweet a couple days ago uh, explaining that I was in a car accident on Mother's Day. I am fine. Everybody else uh, involved in the accident is fine. It happened on the interstate on I-80 uh, around exit 182, uh, fairly high speed crash. But like I said, uh, everybody was fine. I just needed uh, to take a couple days and kind of um, get, you know, get everything figured out um, with my vehicle and insurance and, you know, everything else like that. Um, I want to make a shout out to, I know it sounds, it sounds a little weird, but I want to make a shout out to, um, the people that I, um, that were also involved in the accident, uh, with me. They are wonderful people. I won't say their names on here just for, uh, privacy reasons, but they are wonderful people. Um, I got the chance to talk to, uh, the father, uh, as well as the daughter quite a bit. Um, as I said, they are wonderful people, very understanding, very forgiving people. Um, so shout out to them for being, uh, such great people, especially in this very hard time. Um, as I said, it did happen on mother's day, which is not a great day to have that happen, especially, um, with my mother being involved in that. So, um, like I said, uh, I really, really appreciate those guys uh, for being so understanding and so forgiving about the whole thing. Um, it was a terrible situation, uh, but we were able to find some good out of it. So um, that that's great. But like I said, had to take a couple day hiatus just to um, you know get everything cleared up, make sure everything was set straight and narrow. I am back at my regular job, um, my uh, my not nine to five, but more like seven to six job, uh, working construction throughout the week. So. All is well that ends well and everybody is okay. So we thank God for that. Um, there's a few things that I want to talk about today. Um, one is Iowa lost another assistant basketball coach. We'll get into that first. And then we will get into uh, a couple of women's wrestlers that are going to be wrestling at Iowa their freshman year. Um, taking home some, some hardware at a recent tournament as well as a new football recruit. Uh, for Iowa in the class of 2024. So the first thing I want to talk about today, as I mentioned, is Iowa losing another assistant coach, uh, Kirk Sparaw. Uh, he has chosen to retire from coaching basketball, and his retirement will go into effect on June 30th. Now, as you know, Para is the second assistant coach to leave Iowa this offseason as Billy Taylor took that job at Elon over in North Carolina. Again, congratulations to him. That's great. Um, Sparrow was a part of Iowa's Big Ten Championship team, the last Big Ten Championship that team they had back in 1979. Uh, so Iowa was his alma mater. Along with being an assistant coach at Iowa, Sparrow was also an assistant coach at Florida from 1990 to 1993, as well as a head coach uh, at Central Florida, which was UCF, excuse me, uh, from 1993 to 2010. Sparrow said, quote, uh, I was fortunate Coach Olson gave me my start in coaching here at the University of Iowa, and I am grateful that Coach McCaffrey and Gary Barta brought me back to my alma mater to finish my coaching career with a Big Ten championship. I want to thank my wife Tracy and our four kids for their support and patience throughout my coaching career, and I want to excuse me, and I want to thank all of the student athletes that I have had the honor of coaching throughout my career. Go Hawks. Now, Fran McCaffrey said about the situation, quote, Kirk has been the ultimate for professional, excuse me, and an important part of our basketball program since I arrived here in Iowa City. Kirk was well respected by the players and was one of the key components of rebuilding the program. His knowledge of the game and relationships that he has developed with players, families, and fans will be greatly missed. It has been an honor to work alongside Kirk all these years. Now, if you don't know... Uh, who Spera is. He was a wonderful coach at the University of Iowa, a wonderful assistant coach, along with Billy Taylor as well. Um, and he had some coaching experience in the past, just to kind of sum up uh, what I just said. So he was he was a great, very valuable asset to this Hawkeyes team. So it's, it's really sad to see him leave, but uh, he decided to retire. So, you know, 
those things happen, you just kind of have to roll with the punches. There are a few replacements um, that I came up with that, you know, could in theory replace Spera. Um, the first one being Justin Wyke. Uh, he's a fourth year head coach at Minnesota Duluth. He's coming off one of the best seasons that Minnesota Duluth has had in their entire program history. They started off the season 16 and 0. He's also a former Iowa walk on. Um, so he would be, you know, a great, uh, a great addition to, to Iowa's coaching staff. It's going to be hard to get him to leave um, from that head coaching spot over there at Minnesota Duluth. But, you know, it's a possibility. It's all three of the guys that I have listed as, you know, potential um, um, potential job takers for Sparrow's vacancy are, you know, they're all kind of long shots, but that's how it is nowadays with coaching. Um, it's always going to be a long shot, especially when, you know, these guys that are potential, potential new coaches already have, you know, either assistant coaching jobs or head coaching jobs somewhere else. Uh, the next guy I want to talk about, Jeff Horner, currently the head coach at Truman State, uh, was also an assistant coach at the University of North Dakota, um, a D1 program as well. And he was a point guard at Iowa from 2002 to 2006. He actually played with Matt Gatons, who's the next guy I want to talk about. Uh, he, Matt Gatons, he's a first year, uh, assistant coach at Drake. He was on their staff for, I believe recruiting, uh, previously before that for about four years, one of the best players to ever go through this Iowa program formerly worked, uh, on the Auburn staff, assisting with travel development, as well as scouting. Um, he would be a great addition as well, but like I said, it's, it's hard, you know, it's hard to get these guys to go away from, you know, the spots that they already have, especially if they're head coaching jobs to get a guy to go from head coaching down to assistant coaching. Um, you know, they've got to take a pay cut. They've got to move their family to, um, Iowa city or wherever. Um, wouldn't necessarily be as hard for Gatons as he's already, you know, in Iowa, um, working with Drake as well. But it, all these guys are long shots. Understand that all of these guys are huge long shots for this position. And Iowa may ultimately end up hiring from within, um, from within the program already. But I think any of these three guys would be great fits for this, uh, for this job. Um, especially Gatons as well. Um, working, as I mentioned, formerly on Auburn staff with travel development and scouting. I think he would be great um, to help Iowa out with recruiting and scouting and all that sort of thing. But like I said, it's it's a long shot. It's it's hard to get these guys to leave programs that they're already, you know, well developed into, especially a guy like Wyke, who's in his fourth year now at Minnesota Duluth as a head coach. Um and coming off one of the one of the best, if not the best, um, season that the program has ever had. Uh, so, like I said, any of these guys would be great fits um, for this spot. But Iowa may ultimately end up hiring from within. It just kind of depends, you know, what um, how these guys want to go, how Barta, you know, wants to go with it being AD, and how McCaffrey wants to go with it being a head coach. Obviously, both of those guys are going to have very large opinions uh, when it comes to the matter, but. I think any of these three guys would be a great fit. And if it's none of those three guys, obviously I'll talk about whoever it is that they decide to hire. I'm sure that's probably going to come out in two or three days from now. Um, but like I said, it's, it's hard to tell so far. Um, but hopefully Iowa can get a guy who's got some, you know, coaching experience in the past, whether that's head coaching or assistant coaching, but you know, all that's subjective still. So we'll just have to wait and see before we get into talking about the two Iowa or two future Iowa women's wrestlers uh, picking up some hardware over this past weekend. I want to talk about Built Bar really quick. Now imagine, imagine dipping your fingers into that tub of, you know, that that tub of like fun fetty, whatever it is, birthday cake frosting, and opening your eyes and realizing that it was 150 calories and 16 grams of protein. And that is exactly what it's like to eat a birthday cake puff from Built Bar. And I just received my personal built uh, excuse me, birthday cake puffs, and I've never tried anything like this before. They're so they're they're weird, they're interesting, but they are so so good. They're available right now, and we can't promise that they'll be there tomorrow or the day after. So you gotta go get them today at Built. Com. If you haven't tried any of the puffs, I'll let you in on a little bit of a secret because that's what friends do. Uh, a, a chocolate covered marshmallow protein bar. Yeah, you heard me. It's a chocolate covered marshmallow infused with protein. They're covered in 100% real chocolate. They're absolutely amazing. You can make every day your birthday with Built's birthday 
excuse me, with Built's birthday cake puffs. Built has taken the delicious experience of biting into a fresh slice of birthday cake and robed it into a 100% white chocolate and added sprinkles. So with 150 calories, 16 grams of protein, and only 9 grams of sugar, this limited time flavor is an amazing option if you are looking for a healthy way to get flavor and variety into your day and into your protein intake. All Built Puffs are covered in 100% real chocolate. This means that with Built, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy doing it at the same time. They're made with a collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons and tons of health benefits aside from the fact that they provide a bunch of protein. So go to built.com. You can use our promo code locked 15 and get 15% off your order. Once again, that promo code is locked 15 L O C K E D one five. And you can get 15% off your order at built.com. So you got to go check them out. They are so, so good. Now, the two future Iowa women's wrestlers that I want to talk about today, um, they went to the USA Women's Nationals this past weekend. Both took home the gold, Reese Laramendi and Odwago Nwak, excuse me, Nwakukwu. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. I'm, I'm doing my best shot here. I looked online. I could not find an interview where her name was said. So Odwago Nwakukwu. Um, you can look that name up yourself and obviously you can tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, but that, that's, that was my best shot at it. Um, they both competed for spots on the USA wrestling's U 20 women's freestyle team this past weekend in Texas. Laramendi herself went six and zero over the weekend at the 65 kilogram weight class, which for those of you who don't know is 143 pounds. She went four and zero to make the finals on Saturday and then went on to sweep her finals matches two to zero against Alani Johnson. She won both of those matches i believe uh um on a score of 10 to 0 going into the weekend she was considered the number 18 female wrestler in the country and i guarantee that's going to go up after winning this tournament as well as going on to wrestle and i believe it's bulgaria in august um she currently wrestles for Wyoming Seminary. There are a few girls at Wyoming Seminary that will be coming to the University of Iowa for the inaugural season uh, of the Iowa Women's Wrestling Program. Um, so she is just one of the few um, very, very talented females that is going to be coming to Iowa. In Wakukwu went 5-1 and one over the weekend, also winning her first four matches, going undefeated um, throughout the um, first few rounds in the semifinals going into advance to the finals. Uh, she went two and one against Skylar Hettendorf, uh, at the 62 kilogram or 136 pound weight class. Um, she recently also won an NAIA title for Iowa West Lions. So she is, she's an extremely talented wrestler, not in high school, uh, like Lara Mendy is, um, but she will be transferring to Iowa, um, this next season. She will also be competing at the senior level world team trials later this month that I believe are being held at the um the extreme arena in um excuse me I'm 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 having a brain fart here um I believe that is in Coralville I could be wrong it's somewhere over by Iowa City but she will be competing there as well and the U the U20 excuse me world championship is set to take place in Bulgaria this August 15th through the 21st so I'm excited to see that they are you know kind of taking their talents out of high school and out of um, NAIA to go compete at the world level. So both of them, I wish them the best of luck. They are both extremely, extremely talented wrestlers. And as I mentioned earlier, somebody please DM me on Twitter or on Facebook or on Instagram, whatever it is, and let me know how to pronounce her name. Odwago in Wakukwu is what I got um, out of it. Just looking at it. I tried to, uh, like I said, I tried to look up interviews. I couldn't find anything where her name was mentioned. Um, and I even went as far as putting it into Google translate and that did not help me whatsoever. Um, so that's, that's the best I got. And in Odwago in Wakukwu. Um, so I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. So please, if you know her or you know how to pronounce her name for sure, please let me know. If you are not sure, please do not let me know because I would like to get this right. I don't, uh, I don't like pronouncing names wrong. And I know that I've been getting DMS on Twitter and on Facebook as well about, um, missed name pronunciations. I apologize for that. I am terrible with names. I'm terrible with remembering names. I'm terrible with name pronunciations. I've always been like that. I apologize. I know there's a few of you that are pretty upset with me right now, uh, for some name pronunciations I had in my last episode with some Iowa veterans, uh, on the football team. I apologize. 
I realize it's 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 a big deal to get name pronunciations right, and I apologize. It's something that I'm very, very bad at, and it's something that I will get better at as time goes on. But like I said, both of these wrestlers will be competing um, in August in Bulgaria at those world championships for USA Wrestling. So congratulations to both of them um, going a combined, I believe, 10 and 1, uh, going a combined 10 and 1 over the weekend. So absolutely, or no, excuse me, not 10 and 1. It would be 11 and 1. Um, so congratulations to those two females. And I wish them the best of luck in their freshman seasons. Uh, well, I guess for in Wakukwa, it would probably be her sophomore season, whatever she decides to do with academics there. Um, I wish them the best of luck in their inaugural season with the Iowa women's wrestling program. Now, the third thing that I want to talk about today is Preston Reese, who is a new recruit uh, for Iowa's football team. And before we get into that really quick, I want to talk about Rock Auto. You can save time. You can save so, so much money if you use Rock Auto. Why would you choose to spend 30, 50 or even 100 percent more for the exact same parts from a chain store or even a car? car dealership, excuse me. Um, for example, a Honda Odyssey fuel pump is normally $353 from a chain store, 216 at rockauto.com. All right. And there's hundreds of thousands of more deals out there. Rock Auto's prices are reliably low for every single customer. They have everything that you could possibly need from brake parts to tail lamps, to motor oil, new carpet for your car, whatever it is. We encourage you, we encourage you to go and check out these deals. Personally, I have used Rock Auto myself for my own vehicle. My parents have used it as well. My dad specifically has used it uh, for his 86 Oldsmobile. They, are, it's an, they have absolutely great products. They are at extremely low prices. It's, it's overall a great website. So you can head to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Amazing selection. As I said, reliably low prices, and it has all of the parts your car will ever need. Once again, that is rockauto.com. Now, as I mentioned, Preston Reese, um, this one, fight me about it, all right? Preston Reese, his name is spelled Rise, R-I-E-S. This one, I went on YouTube, I scoured YouTube, I found different podcasts, I found different interviews, it is pronounced Reese, and I am 100% confident in that. Um, I apologize, but I really wanted to make sure I got this name right. Um, so it is Reese, it's spelled Rise, but it's pronounced Reese, um, I got confirmation on that from a couple of people that went to high school with him. Um, it is pronounced Reese. Uh, granted, those confirmations came from comments on YouTube, but I found three of them that all said the same thing, so I'm going with it. Um, he is now the fourth, by the way, he is from Monticello, so he is an in-state recruit. He's now the fourth 2024 in-state recruit that Iowa has picked up uh, this offseason. He joins the likes of offensive lineman Cody Fox, who is a four-star recruit out of East Buchanan. Shout out to East Buchanan. I've got quite a few friends over there uh, from my high school wrestling days. They know who they are. I'm sure they're listening to this right now. Um, so shout out to Tate specifically over at East Buchanan. Linebacker Cam Buffington, he is a three-star out of Winfield Mount Union. And linebacker Derek Weiskopf, of course, who we have talked about extensively on this podcast, is a three-star recruit out of Williamsburg. Along with the four in-state recruits that Iowa has in the class of 2024, Iowa has picked up an additional three in-state recruits in the class of 2023, all of which we have talked about a little bit on the podcast before, that being Alex Moda out of Marion, Ben Cooter out of Iowa City, uh, and Maddox Johnson out of Norwalk. Now, along with these guys, I, I saw this a few days ago and I wanted to talk about it and I figured now would be the time to talk about it. Along with these guys, Iowa has their eyes on in-state recruit Caden Proctor. Now, I'm sure you've heard of this kid before. I had heard of him before, but I hadn't realized that there was this much hype surrounding him. He's an offensive lineman currently at Southeast Polk in the class of 2023, and he's currently the number seven prospect in the nation. In the entire nation, Proctor is still undecided. Granted, he is undecided on where he's going to go after high school. He, I think he's narrowed his decision down to seven different schools, and Iowa is in that seven. So if Iowa can pick him up, he will be a big, big help um, after he gets some college experience. Um, you know, maybe maybe get that starting job in his sophomore, junior season, something like that. Um, I haven't been able to find tape on him yet. I looked on 24-7. I couldn't find anything. So if you guys have or know of 
uh, any highlight tapes out there for Caden Proctor, please send them to me, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever you want to do, please send them to me. I would like to see it uh, because I haven't gotten the chance to see it yet, but he does seem like a very talented kid as well as Preston Reese as well. So I'm excited to see uh, where these guys are going to go. Um, well, I guess Reese, we already know is going to Iowa. He's very, very talented. Um, I believe you, you can look him up on Twitter and see his announcement. I believe it was just uh, a few pictures that he posted that just said committed. So um, I'm, I'm excited to see, and I'm really excited to see uh, where Caden Proctor decides to go. Uh, if he doesn't go to Iowa, I, I don't want him in the big 10. That's, I mean, it's, it's as simple as that. It, it, I, he's, he's got so much hype around him and I know I can't say a whole lot because I haven't seen his tape. So I don't know exactly how talented he is, you know, uh, but being the number seven prospect in the nation, I'm sure his tapes are pretty good. Um, so I mean, without even seeing his tapes, if he doesn't come to Iowa, I don't want him in the big 10 because he's going to be a problem. Um, you know, once he gets some experience under his belt and once he can kind of, uh, you know, grasp the whole, you know, D one college athlete sort of vibe, uh, that you have to have going into, you know, D one athletics. Um, if he doesn't come to Iowa, I don't want him in the big 10 whatsoever. And, but regardless, um, Preston Reese is the newest commit. We talked about, um, the two Iowa women's wrestlers, uh, well, future Iowa women's wrestlers in the inaugural season, Reese Laramendi and Adwago in Wakukwu, um, catching gold at the U20, uh, women's freestyle, excuse me, qualifying for the U20 women's freestyle team this past weekend. Congratulations to them once again. And then we also talked about today, uh, Kirk Spera leaving Iowa, retiring, um, as an assistant coach, he joins Billy Taylor in leaving the program. Taylor, once again, went to Elon for that head coaching job. Um, so congratulations to Spera on his retirement. Hopefully he could enjoy it. I'm sure he will still be involved with Iowa athletics. I'm sure he'll go to the game. Obviously he won't have, um, any, um, any involvement in, within the program. Um, but regardless, once again, his retirement goes into effect on June 30th. So he still has some say, um, in the program until then. So that really is it for today's episode. Um, fairly, fairly shorter episode today. Not too bad. I think we're running about 22, 23 minutes right now. Uh, so thank you all for tuning into today's episode. Once again, you are welcome to hit me up on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook with your questions, comments, concerns. I have been getting granted a lot of constructive criticism, um, especially on the Facebook side of things, but I welcome that. Um, I do read those. I do not respond to all of them just because I do not have time to, uh, but just know if you are sending me um, things on Twitter, on Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is. I am reading those. I am receiving those and I'm taking those into account. So I appreciate that. Once again, I'm still learning. I'm still very new to all this thing. I'm, I'm new to podcasts in general. I do not have very much experience with podcasts. Um, I have more experience when it comes to, uh, live play by play. And personally for me, that's a little bit easier. Uh, that's what I do up in Fort Dodge at college. Um, for uh, a high school team up there. So I'm more familiar with that. I'm not super familiar with the whole, like, you know, uh, finding stories to talk about and taking notes on them and all that sort of thing. Um, more it's, this is more of a scripted sort of thing, uh, versus play by play. So once again, I appreciate your guys' constructive criticism. Please give it, please continue to give it to me. Uh, I do read all of those comments. I read all of those DMS and I welcome them. Um, you can be as constructive, you can be as hard on me as you want, um, or you can give me compliments. A lot of that constructive criticism does usually come with compliments, so I appreciate that. Um, but like I said, most of them just have to do with um, with name pronunciations and stuff like that. And I'm, I, I promise I'm trying to get better at that, and I'm trying to um, gain more knowledge about the Hawkeyes program. Um, granted I've, I've said it on the podcast before. I know way more about, um, professional football than I do college football in general. Um, before I started this podcast, I will admit I followed the NFL way more than I followed college football. Um, but I, I do know, I do know a little bit when it comes to Iowa specifically, um, and big 10 college football. So once again, I appreciate all of the criticism, all of the compliments as well. Continue to give them to me. I will continue to read them. Um, I will probably respond to a few of them. I just don't have time to get to them all. There are several of them that I have not even read yet. Um, so Thank you for that. Thank you for tuning in today's episode as well. Make sure you go check out uh, my Twitter, um, excuse me, my Twitter page. I believe it is right there. You can go check that out as well as the Locked on Iowa, uh, Locked on Hawkeyes, excuse me, Twitter page, which is at Locked on Iowa. And you can follow us on Instagram and on, fa and on our Facebook page as well. So again, thank you all for tuning in to today's episode and we will see